All right, man, peace. So it appears as though Michael Bennett, one of the super woke meatheads in the NFL, has had a change of heart. He no longer believes that it's feasible for many of the more prominent NFL players to continue the Colin Kaepernick-inspired get on one knee and beg the Caucasian man to love you protest that allegedly is meant to bring attention to quote-unquote police brutality. So of course they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. Speaking on a book signing in Seattle, Michael Bennett was asked about the NFL's new anthem policy which were... Yes, Michael Bennett was speaking at a book signing for his new corny ass book, Things That Make White People Upset or Things That Make White People Mad, some type of silly shit like that. As I've told you brothers for a long time, at least for those of you brothers who've been on my channel for a long enough time, pro-blacks are actually pro-Caucasian. They love the Caucasian man. Their entire life revolves around what the Caucasian man likes and dislikes. That's why they're so overly infatuated with what makes Caucasian people upset. Because as I've told many of you brothers who've been on my channel for a long enough period of time, the so-called black community is at the psychological level of a teenager, of someone who's in their adolescence. They're trying to approximate adulthood, but they don't quite know how to do so because like most teenagers, they want to feel grown, but they don't want the responsibility of being grown. The so-called black man wants respect from his proverbial daddy, the Caucasian man, but our people don't understand and the men of our so-called race don't want to grasp that the only way that we're going to get respect is for us to be autonomous entities and to no longer be validated or defined by daddy. And I get so many of these silly ass, simple minded pro-blacks that come on my channel and they'll watch my videos for a month or so trying to figure out how they can pick holes in many of the things that I say, not understanding that I don't give a shit about how you feel about what I'm saying, not even a little bit. Because I know where most of you pro-black dudes come from. A lot of you guys are two-dimensional thinkers. And you come from environments that were predominantly dominated by female energy. That's why you love throwing tantrums all the damn time. As opposed to seeking out real solutions. Because your brain is not fit to seek out real solutions. But I get a lot of these guys to come on my channel. And then they want to start to write these essays going on and on and on about. I think you're really the one who wants to hug from the Caucasian man, dude. We both know what you really want. That's why you so-called pro-blacks are still quote-unquote fighting for equality. You talk all day about the motherland, but you niggas will not go back. You niggas will not start the revolution. You just want to keep this circular race conversation, quote-unquote conversation going. Really this argument going with the object of your affection, that being the so-called Caucasian. Your life is not going to matter to you until the Caucasian man looks you in the eyes and says, I love you. That's really all it's about. And a lot of brothers out there are finally starting to figure out what I've been saying for the longest time about the pro-blacks, quote-unquote. And forget the liberal blacks. They're too busy smoking weed and going to gay parades and Black Lives Matter rallies. They don't even know what the hell's going on requires players and personnel on the field to stand for the national anthem but allows players to choose to remain in locker rooms or other off-field locations until the anthem concludes. I like what Michael Bennett is saying right here. He's saying it isn't so much about the gesture anymore. We don't have to take knee. We just have to work in our communities. That's what you should have said from the first time that you saw that confused nut job Colin Kaepernick get down on one knee. You should have said the real issue is not so-called police brutality. Our real problem is that the so-called black man has to take back control over his society, over his community from the liberal black woman who's really just a proxy of the Caucasian. That's all liberal black females are. They act as mouthpieces for the quote-unquote oppressive force. That's all they do. And the so-called black man has to take back control over his own community. Bottom line. Because for every Caucasian police officer that shoots a so-called unarmed black man, there's 20 so-called black men who are being killed due to being gunned down by one of our own because we're not presiding over our own households. It's not the so-called Caucasian man's job to clean up our mess. We have to clean up our own mess. Many people will say, well, what about slavery? The slave narrative is largely inflated. That's what I mean when I state that our people have not been trained on how to address the root of the issue. That's why they default to emotionality. 
because from the time that they enter the Caucasian man's school system, all they're taught is that they came from slavery. Well, nowadays, all the children are taught is that they came from slavery and that it's preferential for you to be a homosexual or a lesbian than it is for you to be a heterosexual functioning person. For the most part, that's what the so-called black child is learning in the school system. And because of that, they come out of school totally confused. Then they go through the college experience, which is just a grove. That's all a college is, is a grove, meaning a training ground for you to be inducted into the Luciferian principles. And they get totally bugged out of their mind in many of these colleges and come out completely confused and seeking some type of elucidation by being accepted by the Caucasian. That's the process. That's why you'll find that so many of these so-called black leaders are members of college, quote-unquote, Greek fraternities. They don't even know up from down, most of these people. Bennett saying it was never about the flag. Quote, it isn't so much about the gesture anymore. We don't have to take a knee. We just have to work in our community. Now, I wonder what the so-called pro-blacks are going to think about this. Because supposedly... When Michael Bennett was co-signing Colin Kaepernick, remember last season Michael Bennett was sitting on the Seattle Seahawks bench with an angry look on his face during the national anthem. Supposedly he was quote-unquote standing up for the people. Now that he's made this statement, I wonder what the so-called pro-blacks are going to call him. Are they going to call him a sellout or a coon, quote-unquote? Remember this was the same guy who claimed that he was the victim of police brutality in Las Vegas and it ended up all he was was a jackass running out of a club or out of a casino Supposedly, he was racially profiled because he was black in that casino when 80% of the people in there were black. <laughs> oh, boy. And this dumbass is running out of the club in a zigzag pattern like the road runner. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> On the ground like a bitch, six foot four, 270 pounds. Talking about my kids, my kids. I just want to see my kids. <laughs> And the pro-blacks got upset and claimed, yes, he was the victim of police brutality. Let me say this, and I have stated this in numerous videos. Police brutality is an issue in the so-called black community. But it's about number 12 or number 13 on the depth chart. Our people have real issues that we have to resolve. And it's very easy to point the finger at a lot of these lower level problems to avoid and evade what we need to do starting with the so-called black man. That's why my channel is geared towards the so-called black man because all these other demographics do not care about you. The liberal black woman does not give a shit about you. The pro-black woman does not give a shit about you. The pro-black woman really only wants attention for herself. That's why you see all these rallies and these protests are led by the liberal black woman. They act as agents of the quote-unquote Black Lives Matter, really Black Lesbians Matter movement, which is being subsidized by Caucasian Jewish banksters from overseas. That's all it's about. Once they use you brothers up, they're going to cash you to the side. I say this over and over and over again. And now this idiot, two years down the line, is finally saying, we just have to work in our communities. Yeah, starting with your own household. So-called black man, preside over yourself and over your household and watch how much things get better. Because you have a lot of these young boys out here running in the middle of the street getting into trouble because they're going home to feminine energy to female energy which, which is mostly based around the propagation of chaos that's it when we cure that problem so many of these other issues are going to go away but the so-called black man has to stop venerating number one the feminine principle and number two the image of the caucasian those are the two main false gods of the so-called black man the black feminine principle, let me specify, not just the feminine principle, but the black feminine principle. That's why you have these clowns running around talking about the black woman is God. That's number one. And also the image of the Caucasian. The so-called black man is taught to venerate that image. When brothers stop doing that, a lot of our problems are going to go away. We have to start making better decisions in regards to the women that we're choosing to procreate with. We have to start understanding the distinction between a wife and a concubine very important a lot of cats are out here trying to glorify and wipe up concubines i had a brother trying to go back and forth with me talking about only non-black women can be concubines the black woman can only be a wife a lot of that nonsense is taught in many of these various systems where they're trying to exalt the so-called black woman our women are beautiful when they're in their right mind 
many of them are not in their right mind. Okay? That's why the scriptures tell you, remember Lot's wife. Please keep that in mind. You cannot have your spirit into your woman in Babylon. Nitties, look who's back. Who's Riddick in the house? Good to have mm -hmm. you. Yep. Stephen A., I want to start with you on this. What's your reaction to Bennett? Well, I think he's right. I mean, the fact of the matter is the message has been sent. Um, anything else now? What message is that, sir? That the so-called black man still knows how to beg to try to get what he, what he thinks he wants and will never get it? You're never going to be validated by the so-called Caucasian man. All they're going to do is look at you as less and less of a man for annoying them. And yes, they still believe that the protest is about the anthem and not about so-called police brutality. Because every time a Caucasian man looks at a so-called black man getting gunned down by the cops, even if he's running away from the cops, it is normally due to a situation where the so-called black man was involved in a carjacking or a robbery or what have you. Let's be for real, and I'm going to start a series on this. Was it racial profiling, or was it police brutality, or is it fake news? I'm going to, I'm going to title it something along those lines. Because the so-called black man has to be taught how to raise his overall acumen, his understanding of what's going on. Because if we're going to have our own society, order has to be the rule of the day. What they're trying to do is they're trying to throw a lot of this race stuff into it to make the so-called black man believe that it's okay for him to commit acts of terrorism within his own community, which is all it is when you promote criminality, you're promoting domestic terrorism in the so-called black community. That's what you're doing. It's okay that cats are out here stabbing and shooting and, and uh, carjacking because when the cops try to pull them over, they don't have a gun on them, they can run away. That's the same mentality that would exist if we were actually running our own system, our own environment. We cannot have disorder. We cannot allow that. So a lot of these young brothers are going to have to be trained to value themselves. No, you're not just a criminal. No, you can be a lot more than an entertainer and things of that nature. We have to start exhorting the so-called young black man to appreciate his brain and to utilize his brain. That's why I tell brothers to put that fucking weed down because it clouds your brain. A lot of them get upset with me. Oh, how do you know that? Here's what I know, nigga. I know... I could be lobotomized and I'll still be 10 times smarter than your dumb ass when you high on that shit. Okay? You don't like it? Oh well. Else now is just a distraction and it takes away uh, from the NFL what it's trying to be. Uh, it's bottom line, obviously, and then some. You know, the Colin Kaepernick, we know what Colin Kaepernick's issue is. We know that it's been hijacked by the President of the United States with his constituency, some of whom are patrons of the National Football League. We understand that. We understand the residual impact that it has had. It put several owners in panic mode. Uh, it empowered and emboldened players uh, to take even more uh, conspicuous positions. There he go with a depressed look on his face. He's really depressed because he don't know what the fuck to do. That's the average so-called pro-black. After they throw their tantrum, you know like how a child throws a tantrum and goes to his room and just looks at the corner? That's how a lot of these so-called pro-blacks look trying to figure out how they can get the white man to give him a damn hug. And as a result of that, uh, we have what we have. Uh, but if you're Michael Bennett and you're uh, an individual uh, who contributes... My kids, my kids, I just want to see my kids. ...to your community, uh, who cares about issues pertaining to your community and has a background and a track record showing just that. It's not about what you say and it's not about uh, props or posturing at some point. Now it's about the actual actions that take place. It's not now that it's about the actual actions. It was always about that. So-called black man, if you really love your people and love your community, all we have to do is preside over ourselves and over our immediate environment, our household. It doesn't take any grandiose gestures. All that shit was for the satisfaction of the Caucasian Marxist Jewish media that's been puppeting the liberal blacks for the last hundred plus years that's all that shit was ever about and i keep trying to tell you brothers that that colin kaepernick is an mk asset and a marxist pawn i've been saying that from the inception of this channel and since i've been talking about that issue that validate the concerns that you profess to have and that's what he's addressing here in other words we've talked enough and, and you know figuratively speaking of course by taking the knee and making the statements that we've made 
That is out there. Everyone knows where we stand and how we feel. Now let's get back to the business of doing our jobs, playing football, but also doing the work in the communities. And we will make our noise that way. Brothers, once again, the main way that we do work in our communities is making sure that we're taking inventory of ourselves every day and we're not selling ourselves short in regards to the type of respect that, that we demand for ourselves, how much we respect ourselves, and therefore how much we're going to demand respect for others and how we treat them and also from others and how they treat us. That's how we're going to make changes in the so-called black community, all right? And how we maintain our family, our immediate family, things of that nature. And it's not about you getting along with everybody. It's about you understanding that you have to value your own life and the life of the next so-called black man. We have responsibilities in regards to the type of female that we procreate with. I cannot stress that enough. The so-called black man is out here impregnating hood rats. And it's leading to a lot of problems. You know why you're impregnating hood rats? Because you have very low self-esteem and all you've experienced your whole life was degeneracy. So you don't understand the value of your own seat. It's not about getting down on no fucking knee. Because the only kind of noise that we can make by continuing to kneel is basically going to be counterproductive to what... It was always counterproductive. Nobody ever paid no real attention to them niggas, man. And I know a lot of pro-blacks out there not going to like what I'm saying. I don't give a shit. Most of you niggas out there, you ain't, you ain't going to start no damn revolution. And you ain't going to go back to whatever African country you claim you from. So that's why I have such disdain for the pro-blacks. They all talk. So all they do is talk shit all damn day. The solution is always within you, so-called black man. You're supposed to be a king, man. You're not supposed to have to look to, to a bunch of damn overweight lesbians with signs and nappy afros like Wanda Sykes walking down the street talking about Black Lives Matter. Those bros don't care about you, man. They want to replace you. To what we do for a living and who we represent for a living, not just the National Football League, but the National Football League Players Association. I think the counterproductive point is just right. The point has been made. Kneeling gives ammo to those who are against you and who have... As they Wait a minute, Max Kellerman. Now all of a sudden you're stating that kneeling gives ammo to those that are against you. You were in favor of kneeling. Brothers, do you see how short-sighted all of these gestures always have been from the very start? That's what I tell you, man. When, when you're dealing with liberalism, they use you. That's it. And then once they're done with you, they're going to castigate you for doing what they told you to do. They say hijacked the issue. Let's recall how this all started. Colin Kaepernick, quietly, off to the side, did not feel right. His conscience told him he can't stand for the national anthem. Oh, please. Colin Kaepernick is a confused dude. He's a plant in the NFL. The man started acting like a bitch when he lost his starting job. That's what happened. And his woman put a battery or two batteries in his back. That's his MK handler, Miss Ness Nitty. And you're going to hear a lot from her in the up and coming future. Okay, All this shit was always for show. And a lot of these pro-black dudes, they don't have no damn daddy at home. So they're looking for athletes on TV to lead them somewhere. Based on interactions between law enforcement and communities of color in this country that we weren't living up to our ideals well you know let me say this we as so-called black men are not living up to our own ideals in regards to our interactions with one another that's the main thing that we have to concern ourselves with because as i've stated in previous videos we need to have our own police force but we cannot have that until we learn how to administer the so-called black man has no administrative abilities anymore because he's been told that he's not a good leader so he doesn't trust himself to make the right decisions. He does not trust the next so-called black man to make the right decisions. Because we have been taught to be cutthroat with one another. That's what we've been taught. Okay? So we have to repair all these issues as opposed to worrying about the police force. When I walk down the street, I don't give a shit about when a cop drives by. Because I'm going about my business, man. Okay? I don't worry about getting patted down and all this other shit. And if they stop me and they say, sir, you fit a description, can we see your ID? Give my ID because the most high protects me. I, I fear no man. All right. I go about my business every day. 
A lot of these guys, these so-called pro-blacks, they live their life in fear, trying to act strong. If you really was for your people, you'd understand that black is not a race, dude. It's not a race, it's not a history, it's not a culture. It's just a color, that's it. And he quietly knelt, and then it became an, a, a story. He didn't do that up front and center. He just felt like, you can't tell me what to say. You can't control my political speech. You can't, I, I'm not gonna just, you're not, you don't simply don't, you don't simply have my allegiance because- None of that bullshit has anything to do with the national anthem. None of that. You're trying to turn it into a partisan issue. Politics implies partisanship, okay? There's nothing partisan about the national anthem. Now, if you want to say that you don't appreciate what you believe the national anthem stands for, well, the national anthem is really just, a, is really just theme music for the corporation known as the United States. The United States is not a country, it's a corporation. And I've said this over and over and over again. The so-called black man doesn't grasp this because he's been taught to always resort to emotionality. All the United States is, is a commercial or a corporate outlet for the global corporation. That's all it is. That's why we receive birth certificate numbers and social security numbers when we're born. Those act as our bond numbers, our trust numbers. We're just financial assets. We're debt slaves. That's what that means to be a citizen of a quote-unquote country in this society. This is a global corporation. I cannot stress this enough. So there's layers and layers of programming that the so-called black man is under. That's why I don't direct anything that I say to the so-called black woman because when the black man gets his mind right, then he can go teach his woman and then his woman can view him as a conduit for wisdom and knowledge and that's how you grow closer. We've been taught in this society that men and women should learn together. That's to promote confusion because the woman in general is a two-dimensional thinker. She's going to bring confusion to an environment when she's surrounded by too many people because automatically she's going to search out how she can get attention. How do people normally get attention when they're two-dimensional thinkers? They get it by creating chaos. Because of some nationalistic idea, Professor Michael Eric Dyson. Another shill working at Georgetown, a Jesuit institution. The Jesuits are just the CIA for the Vatican. Go ahead. Has made the point, and I've talked about it on the show, um, that there's a difference between nationalism and patriotism. Right? Nationalism is I love where I'm from um, simply because I'm from there and this is our team and regardless of the behavior of, of, of this team, um, this is my team so, so I root for it, pull for it and hope it succeeds. And patriotism is no, I want to make, you know, I, I, I love where I'm from but I love where I'm from because of how we behave. And when we well, sir, you know what? Oscar Wilde once stated that patriotism is the virtue of the vicious. For those of you who don't know who Oscar Wilde was, I believe he was a novelist who wrote the book, The Picture of Dorian Gray, about a man who didn't age because he had a portrait of himself that aged. That's what he stated about patriotism. Patriotism oftentimes is an excuse for people to do vicious and malicious things in the name of the love of their country. So really the so-called black man in this society shouldn't be a patriot or nationalist. He should be trying to work on building up the cultural affinity amongst his own. It starts with respecting yourself and respecting your brother. And the number one thing is we have to put the most high first. When we don't behave the way I think we should, then I'll fight to try to make sure that we do better. That's patriotism. And Colin Kaepernick was saying, I'm not gonna simply um, you, you know, adhere to some kind of nationalistic idea. I think we can do better and certainly is that really Colin Kaepernick's platform that, quote-unquote, we can do better? Or is it like Heath Ledger said when he played the Joker in The Dark Knight, that some men just want to see the world burn? Hmm? Because that's truly what it means to be a Marxist. Marxism is, is just a, an ideological creation of Karl Marx, of course, to implement the Hegelian dialectic, meaning order out of chaos. Even if he's not saying that, that he's not trying to affect change, at the very least he's saying, you can't make me simply parrot your political speech. Well, Max Kellman, which one is it? Is he trying to affect change or is he not? How is he trying to parrot political speech by just standing for the national anthem? A lot of people are not going to like this, but I agree with Trump. My attitude is, if you feel that much disdain for the national anthem, then you should figure out 
what other place you want to go to to live. If we had our own country with our own anthem and we had non-black people there who said, I'm not going to stand for that national anthem, what would we tell them? we tell them no problem, get the fuck out. I know that's what I would say. If we had our own country with our national anthem playing and a foreigner was in our country and they said, I don't respect your national anthem, I know I would say get the fuck out of my country then. So I can't get mad at Donald Trump when he says that. Because I got news for you, America's not going to change. All it's going to do is circle the drain. America owes damn near $30 trillion to the international bankers. It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. So in the meantime, what they're going to do is they're going to push and promote a lot of these Luciferian ideologies, promoting uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, pansexuality, transgenderism, soon to come, pedophilia, pederasty, per se. That's what they're going to start pushing. Okay? So if you're hoping for this place to get better ideologically, it is not. So the so-called black man has to band together. He has to get his shit together first. And, and, and I think the new rule, Stephen A., which I advocated for, which I, I came up with and, and advocated for, to, to say if we we're going to have this ceremony, anyone who doesn't want to be on the, you know, who doesn't want to stand, doesn't have to, but you got to be in the locker room. I think it really addresses that. Kaepernick is no longer in a position where he must stand for the national anthem. He must parrot anyone else's political speech. So Bennett's point that, that there's no reason to kneel. There are more constructive way of doing things. By the way, you can play people the Sterling Brown video, right? Put that on your social media. See the response to that. You can work in the community, Stephen A., as you said, as Michael Bennett has done. But, but the idea of giving um, the, the side that would have you do exactly as you're told, more ammunition to distract from the real issue by kneeling, I understand that point, and I, in fact, I agree with it. Brothers, let me say this very quickly because, once again, this is the type of dude who's going to put a battery in the black man's back, so-called black man's back. Certain brothers feel a certain type of way about the so-called national anthem, as I've already stated. Uh, there's a lot of history in regards to this, the so-called black man in America that does, that does not get told to him to make him think that he's always supposed to associate himself with being a slave. It is what it is. At the end of the day, we have to start operating with more of a ruling class mentality as opposed to being emotionally moved by nonsense. Let's get our own. Let's work on getting towards getting our own. That's what we have to focus on, not getting down on one knee and begging. The other races, they come to America. They understand that America, culturally, is similar to a harlot. When it comes to a whore, you don't fall in love with the whore. You see what you can get from it. When the Asians come here, when the East Indians come here, the Africans come here, their mentality is, how are we going to pimp this whore? So-called black people are the only ones who are trying to fall in love with this whore. The disappointing part for, for me about all this is I think by and large, Stephen A. and Max, this is where the players were anyway. It was about time, It was about the work. It was about doing the work. It was about, as Mike Tomlin likes to say, where the rubber meets the road, which is actually getting out in the community and doing something. I think that's where the players were anyway until the whole anthem policy came into play and became... Brothers, you don't need NFL players to help your community. All you have to do is start with yourself, period. Stop trying to join gangs. Stop selling drugs. Stop taking drugs. Stop using excuses for bad decisions. Make sure that you optimize whatever your gifts are, whether you have to go to a technical school, learn a craft, or go to college. The resources are there for you. Most of you brothers have more than one gift. Utilize it. Stop bowing down before vaginas and compromising yourself, having children with, with whores and low-level females. You have to try to raise up your woman, but you have to get wisdom first. You have something to teach her. And if she refutes it or refuses it, then she can have a nice day. You have to stipulate the terms of engagement and everything. That's what a king does, man. You don't need no meathead that plays for the New York Jets to come into your community and give out old jackets and supposedly he's trying to help the community get better. A lot of these guys don't know what the fuck is going on. Everything starts with you. Came, you know, part of the forefront of, or rather back at the forefront of the discussion as far as to kneel, not to kneel, what it meant to kneel, was the message being hijacked anyway, and when they weren't, when they weren't consulted 
by the owners as far as what this policy was concerned. And now all of a sudden the whole kneeling issue became an issue again. I think the players have wanted to get to this point anyway. They always wanted this to be the point in the first place. And, and look, you guys both put it eloquently as to why it didn't get to this point, or rather why there hasn't been enough attention put on the actual work. I think now, without a doubt, I know me myself, I have tried to make a concerted effort via social media to hyper uh, bring attention to the kinds of good work that players are doing in the community, the kind of things that players should be highlighted for. All this shit has ever been about are the international mar Marxists. All this shit has ever been about from its inception are the international Marxists trying to engineer the NFL because they know the clout that the NFL has with the fabric of American society. They want to turn the NFL into a woke league like the NBA. That's all it's ever been about. For the kind of things that really should be at the forefront of our media push and our attention, which is guys who are just helping out people in need, trying to enact change, trying to make things better for people of color and for minorities, and really try to make that the message and really push back against what we know people want the narrative to be, which is these are unpatriotic, spoiled brats who don't understand just how good they have it in America. Well, Lewis Riddick, if people believe that the average NFL player is unpatriotic and a spoiled brat, they have people like Colin Kaepernick and a lot of the other woke meatheads in the NFL to blame for that. Because at the end of the day, when you're playing in the NFL, you have to consider yourself a businessman. You never alienate the market that you're trying to appeal to. We all know that the average NFL viewer is relatively conservative and a Caucasian from middle America. Does, th does that mean that people from the coastlines don't watch the NFL? Of course they do. But the NFL targets conservative Caucasians from middle America. That's their core market, always has been. All the way from up north in Minnesota to down south in Texas. That's the core demographic. Now, of course, people in LA and New York City are watching football as well. But that's what the NFL market still wears to. When it comes to the NBA, the NBA is more liberal. So they always target big cities along the East Coast and the West Coast. Now, of course, does the NBA have teams in middle America as well? Yes. But they're more focused on the more cosmopolitan cities in the East and on the West. So it's a totally different culture. Once again, this was really about trying to change the NFL, convert it into a woke league so that they could try to bring more of more of a sense of liberalism to America overall and this shit was never going to work it was a very poorly executed plan utilizing very simple minded pawns in America which is not the issue well, I think we all need well, to make sure that we push that message which is the good that the what? players are doing as much as we possibly can Wait, wait, Lewis, I don't disagree with you, but here's what I would challenge your point on. Mm -hmm. I think the players need to do a better job of doing that themselves. Okay. You know, th I'll give you a perfect example, Lewis. If you went on NFL Live today and said something that a player didn't like, they would be quicker to react towards that. You could sit there. It ain't nothing. It's nothing personal. You might have said, look, they look a bit slow. Oh, they look like they don't. They, they might have lost a step. They don't have it anymore. They would be quicker to respond to that, Lewis, than to put out there the positive stuff they're doing themselves. They prioritize a drink. Well, Stephen A. Smith, here's the issue with that. <laughs> they're NFL players, so of course they're going to be more sensitive to someone critiquing what they do on the field. Maybe they're doing certain things in their community out of the kindness of their own heart, and they're not trying to broadcast it. It's not really their job to publicize their good deeds. But let me just get back to the point. For real change to come to the so-called black community, we have to look within ourselves. Each individual person, and it always starts with the so-called black man. And of course, certain brothers are going to say, well, what if my woman don't want to listen to me? Well, then you know what? You may have to tell her to have a nice day. It's okay. But we have to engineer a lot of these sisters because, believe me, they're being puppeted by the television and by the liberal Caucasian female with their feminism. As I tell you brothers all the time, the liberal black female is galvanized by three personas. That being the globalist persona, 
the racialist persona and most of all the feminist persona all right so you have to investigate these women before you deal with them and take them seriously on any level because in order for you to change what's going on in your community it starts with yourself but you're going to need the woman because you're going to have children with her and the child has to be raised up in an environment where there's some type of order can be order if the female is resistant to what you're saying so you have to be able to cut a woman off man addressing the negative as opposed to pushing the positive even about themselves there's evidence all over the place about that in terms of social media they do a great great work in the community they are conscientious observers they do a lot of good things they care about a lot of different issues but by and large they are so quick to react to what other people are doing rather than promote the positive they're, they're doing not just individually but collectively and I think that's part of the problem too Lewis they allow us to be distracted because they show us what they get distracted by unfortunately that is a characteristic of society in general Stephen A the negative okay. always grabs attention the negative is something that people go, oh, what's the latest scandal? Oh, what's the latest thing somebody's mad about? Oh, what's the latest disagree? I think that's unfortunately kind of how we're wired and kind of how... And Stephen A. Smith, you're being very disingenuous, brother. You have your own television show. You have... You and Stephen A. Smith, you're being very disingenuous, brother. You have your own television show that is on ESPN five days a week. You have the opportunity to call the shots in regards to what you want to talk about. You know damn well what moves the needle, and that is controversy. You know damn well that you're not going to show such and such handing out winter coats in such and such city. You'd rather talk about who's not scoring, who's not an alpha male, uh, who's scared. Those are your favorite topics. Let's be for real. Kind of how we are geared now as people in general. So I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I think people do absolutely need to kind of unlearn what they've learned and rewire themselves, especially with this issue in particular. Well, so that's not going to happen other than through a very large and mass scale traumatic event. And that is truly what the so-called black community needs, especially. But once again, it all goes back to the so-called black man. Nobody else. Which is what we're talking about. This issue about the players themselves. But they need to be pushing the positive, and they need to push it hard. Because that's the only thing, you know what, look, we know that there are certain factors that are going to push the negative no matter what. So why, why, why even continue to get down into that cesspool? Keep pushing the positive and keep well, pushing the work that you're doing. The, they themselves and us as people who, you know, people listen to, people listen to you, Max, people listen to you, Stephen A., push the positive as hard as possible. Look, I've done it a few times on social media, and quite honestly, it's been received tremendously look Jermaine Gresham the, the incident where he had in the airport where he helped the young lady out with getting home on a plane ticket and he just paid for a $50 baggage fee I got 19,000 likes and almost 5,000 retweets on my th people yeah but you know what brother who gives a shit about that we're talking about a large-scale issue all right these are major issues that's going on in the so-called black community okay the brother helped pay for a chick's airplane ticket that's nice but that's the problem with the so-called black community. We're always looking for feel-good stories and likes on social media. That shouldn't be the concern. The concern is the so-called black man making sure that he returns to a ruling class mentality and presides over himself and over his household. That's the main thing that we have to be concerned with. Everything else is going to be a trickle-down effect from that. People want a positive message. We just need to get and it out And we don't there. hear it enough, and then it yeah. allows an opportunity for it to replicate also because right. people aren't sure what they can do and encourages them to follow that same path. Absolutely. I'm with you 100%. Lewis, we'll see you in NFL Live yeah. a little later. Okay. All right, good stuff. So look but anyway, that's it on that. We'll see what happens with this story regarding the NFL anthem policy. I'll probably be doing some other videos about it as well. So peace.